So COVID-19 may not be the only health concern that workers have to consider as they return back to the office. A lot of experts say that uh, office buildings that were packed with thousands of people may actually pose some maybe unexpected health risks when uh, businesses open back up again. So we're going to dig into this. We want to bring in Dr. Andrew Welton. Doctor, you're an associate professor of civil, environmental, and uh, ecological engineering at Purdue University. Ecological? Ecological. So anyway, you're the guy to ask about this. Um, when I was sort of digging into this topic, uh, I thought to myself, well, you know, isn't it sort of the same health risks, risks that were there before? Maybe we're sort of much more aware of them. But you suggest, no, there might be some other risks or greater risks now that we didn't consider. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for having me. In normal situations, we're concerned about lead and copper and sometimes organisms growing in our pipes, but we flush that water out because that's how we use buildings. We, we go to them in the morning, we leave in the afternoon, or we go in at night and leave in the morning. And the fact of the matter is that's okay. Sometimes we have problems, but now with this extended stagnation and the San Francisco Chronicle reported the other day, some buildings in the commercial district have had 100% reduction in water use. That means absolutely no water is moving into buildings, and that's the risk. Hmm. So one of the biggest threats from stagnant water is Legionnaire's disease. So what is it, and how can the, bact the bacteria that causes the infection spread through a building's plumbing system? So Legionnaire's disease is pretty serious. For those that are infected, the death rate's about 1 in 10. And Legionnaire's disease is caused by a bacteria, Legionella pneumophila, that lives inside plumbing pipes along the pipe walls and in the tanks. And if we have good plumbing that we keep maintained, we have hot temperatures and we have chlorine disinfected in there, we can keep that Legionella out of the water and against the wall. But when we let water sit there, that's a serious problem. And you generally contract Legionnaire's disease by inhaling uh, contaminated water, uh, aerosols due to showering or splashing or hot tubs and spas. So you're a property manager. You're looking ahead to maybe the possibility of your office building opening. What do you do to reduce the risk? Is it, is it as simple as sort of flush, I don't know, running the pipes and flushing the toilets, or is some of the stuff still sort of hanging in the air? So that's that's a great, great question. People do need to keep the water moving. You gotta keep the water fresh in your building. And if you can do that, then you can avoid this consequence of um, stagnation. And if you found yourself, and I had a, a school call me the other day, they left two months ago and they now have stagnant water in their building and they just heard that stagnant water is bad. So they called and they said, mm -hmm. so what do we do now? And some of the local health departments have advice that building owners can go to, some of the state health departments have advice, and some people can also call us and other, other individuals to get help and we can prescribe uh, recommendations. So are there any guidelines from regulators or health authorities on how to deal with long-term water stagnation? So they're not. There are no national standards. There's no industry guidelines. In March 2020, there was nothing. And now what's happened in you know, since then, over 45 different documents have been released by state governments, county governments, uh, local governments, water utilities, um, private consultants, uh, device manufacturers about warning about the issue of water quality deterioration in buildings and safety. But there's really no standardized process. So it, it's kind of a little bit of a free for all. And that's what we're trying to bring together is, is give people prescribed recommendations. All right, so you're an employee. You, you, maybe you're, head, you're gonna head back to work. Um, the, wherever you work, they don't know anything about Legionnaire's disease and stagnant water, so maybe you gotta kind of look out for yourself. What sort of suggestions do you have for, for people who might be heading into a situation like this? So if you're a worker in a building and you're going in and your employer's talking about uh, cleanliness and keeping surfaces clean and social distancing, you should also be told something about the water system. You know, did they shut off uh, water fountains? Did they shut off bathrooms? Because what that's going to do is that's going to slow water down in the building. You're not going to have as much moving through. 
So you want to know what the building owner is going to be doing. Are they going to be flushing toilets more often? Are they going to be flushing the other water fountains more often? These are questions that building occupants and visitors uh, need to be told about. Really, really fascinating reporting uh, uh, and analysis. Dr. Andrew Welton, thank you very much for sharing that with us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me.